Commence primary ignition. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. What a piece of junk. Enterprise, this is the captain. I got a bad feeling about this. It's all part of the plan. Engage. Welcome back to Podcast 2 for 1. I am your host, Donovan Thompson, with my co-host, Spider-Man. It's called, no dude, it's, 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 here, here's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> okay, can you do it again, Cl- please? If you want to do like the flip in there, you can do like the P part. Sorry, <laughs> that was awful. No, keep going, yeah. come on. Okay, can you do it real slow with just like... Perfect. I think I've got that now. I have everything I need to make it a really, really embarrassing video of just you. That's that's what I was oh, looking for. I, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, I know you weren't. I was like, maybe he's going to pull, pull the sound bite for later. <laughs> no. And now, and now just, I, forgot no. We, I forgot we're recording video. Uh, anyway, yeah. welcome back to Podcast 2 for 1. I'm your host, Donovan Thompson, with co-host... Daniel Schmingfield. Daniel Schmingfield. Um, so... Um, it's in the Babycast, right? Babycast retro review, kind of retro in the sense that it came out last year, but retro enough where the conversations already happened, but we're back again because this man right here has not watched it, and now he's finally cut up on the latest and last entry of the MCU. And we'll be honest, we're tastemakers, okay? Once we bring up a conversation, the internet kind of erupts yeah. in that conversation. If you ever want to know what we're talking about, just go look at the trending on Twitter. Yep. So like, if you just want to kind of skip the podcast, like, well, what did they talk about this week? Go look at the trending, and then you'll know. Oh, yep. that's what Daniel and Dominic talked about. That's exactly right. Yeah. So True Daniel, um, I, you know so me, me, my top three favorite superheroes of all time is Spider Man, Green Lantern, and Batman. Spider Man probably being the Mac Daddy of them all, um, and I'm a huge fan of him. I, I loved, you know, all of Sam Raimi's films. Um, one Amazing Spider Man. You loved of, three. I can find a, I can find a lot about three. I really enjoy. I can too. I can, and, but and it's not. Of course, there's things in there that are. Uh, but I can. I I think I think I fun, funny enough that that movie did Venom infinitely better than Venom did Venom, and it's kind of sad. Because, you think so? Because huh. everyone shit on Venom and Spider Man Three. I'm like, uh, uh, go back and watch it versus watch Venom. Anyway, mm. Mm. so. We have, um, then we had the Amazing Spider Man, right? And then we, so Marvel finally got him back for um, the MCU and he debuted in Civil War with Tom Holland. Then we got a mm, solo spin off so with Spider Man Homecoming where he fights also the Vulture. Also pretty good. Also pretty good, right? Um, and now we're back with, um, you know, the, basically the closing chapter of the Infinity Saga, right? The, it's like the, yeah, the, the, the farewell, the epilogue. The epilogue, right? It's like the, the aftermath and kind of like the tie ups of a few loose ends emotionally mm-hmm. and us like kind of cathartically dealing with, you know, spoilers, the death of um, Tony Stark. Um, and, you know, overall, what's your thoughts on the film? Overall, <clears throat> overall, I kind of picked the mic. I might cut that part out. Overall, I enjoyed it. It was a fun MCU film. Um, I think it was always going to suffer from being the first movie after Endgame and just the the come down of the high of Infinity War Endgame and how perfect everything was in that. Uh, and some, sometimes when I just start up a Marvel movie, I'm like, hmm, do I want to watch this or do I want to watch Infinity War and Endgame again? <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? Well, like all those moments. One thing you can um, see that they have done is like say Avengers 1 Oh, it's a poor example. We had Iron Man 3. So Avengers Age of Ultron, we had Ant-Man after that one. And then with um, Infinity War, we had Ant-Man and the Wasp, right? Um, so right. we kind of having these, like, you know, like you said, a cool down, right? So yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah, these big event movies, and we we're going to pull it back on this, you know, either small as a superhero, Ant-Man, or on the street level, like Spider-Man. So I think yeah. it's kind of cool, like a breath of air to like, you know, sure. you know kind of... But it also, it also wasn't on the street level. And I, and I think... Maybe that was a little bit what of, of what I missed from, you know, from Homecoming, I guess, was that, you know, the kind of the whole theme of that was Tony telling him to be like a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And we got to see a, what a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man looked like. And that was a lot of the charm of that movie, kind in my of. opinion. I, I, feel I mean, like I know that with the, the whole plot of that was him breaking, like being like, no, I have to be more and like. Well, I wouldn't you know, even. I, know, I, think, I, more. I think you're right on all those accounts. I just think that. I and mean, if you notice in Homecoming, there's no tall buildings. He doesn't web off a tall building. He's always no right exactly. And so I feel like it was they're really trying to pull back because you know, he's still in Queens, right? And around Queens, there's not. No, really... that's what I'm saying. That's what I kind of missed. From, yeah, really? See, from see, to me, Spider Man is like I like New York and swinging through the you know you know Daily Bugle and the tall buildings and, and we yeah, kind of we got that in the last five minutes of um, sure. And, and the reason why they didn't do that these last two movies primarily was because a and they're trying to differentiate it from the last five. 
right? Sure. And sure. then also, we, of course, we went. This is the first time we went international, right? We've had her on a on a bus trip, a school trip. I mean, we've been international in plenty of the other movies. Not Spider Man wise. Other, well, not Spider. Other. That's what I'm talking about. Well, Spider-Man no, wise. he was in but, Civil War. That's they're yeah, not in America. I know, but you know, you know what I'm saying though. Like, well, you, I'm just saying. No, you know what I'm saying. Well, I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Tony tells Peter to get his passport in Civil right. War because he has to go overseas. I don't know. I mean, it's it's not that new. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well. On a solo level, it's very new. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I think um, it was a nice, natural progression for Peter Parker, Spider-Man, that we have in Marvel movies. Um, it kind of felt like they were positioning him to be the next Tony Stark, right? I mean, that was literally said over and over again. It was. Yeah, I mean, they got the glasses. He got Edith, which was like the drone thing. Which Isn't that also the glasses that his suit came out of? In I believe Infinity so, War, yes, which was. is maybe one of the best, coolest suit ups for him. Well, no, because it was no, it's Actually, not as cool as Iron, Iron Man Two has one of the most badass suit ups. But Iron Man Two is great. I, think. I really liked because this one he had the track suit thing. Yeah, That's he, what it was. Choo-choo. Yeah, and that yeah. was really badass. Um, I uh, think my favorite suit up for Iron Man was probably I love the Avengers one, the first Avengers. I don't know. I like Iron Man three. I like how that all shoot. The race track at Iron Man Two is a pretty. I mean, that's, one. that's when they slide that's in the good. briefcase. Yeah, no, that's yeah. The, Arm thing. Yes, and yeah, no, that really that one's pretty badass. No. Uh, but overall, you know, it was it was a it was an enjoyable Spider Man movie. I don't think it didn't blow my socks off in almost any area. I feel like okay, so Quentin Beck Mysterio, right. which I you know the first superheroes any kind of content I consumed was the Spider Man '90s TV show, and Mysterio was a main recurring villain of that. So I was all in. Yeah. Can't wait for Mysterio. I'm a long time Mysterio fan, yeah. um, and he was fine. I mean, it. I, I feel like I do feel like this this movie continued Marvel's uh, consistent issue for Marvel, which is underwhelming villains or he underwhelming he, he antagonists. He was so, like compared to some of the other, ones, I think he's like the like kind of on the other side of like the good part of the MCU villains. He, he's not the best, but it no, was, he just wasn't that. Like I, there was all the mystery, right? And we knew it was coming of who, it, what, it, what is actually going on here. Like, who's actually behind this? Right. And it just wasn't an interesting reveal. Like, it's like, oh, I didn't expect that, but I'm also not that interested by that. Like, it's just a bunch of ex-Stark employees that w- feel like they should have gotten richer. One thing about You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just like, okay, well, then I don't care about any of you dying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, thing, as, you know? as much as I love that Spider-Man is in the MCU, one thing I really miss is, like, is that the disconnect, actually, of like, hey, Spider-Man is Spider-Man, and he doesn't need all these other heroes kind of come in and help him save the day because he has to do it all by himself. And sure. it feels like they really have been leaning into the MCU so much, more so than others. Like, I think of all the franchise films, like, that is the other than Avengers. The Spider-Man course, movie? The Spider-Man movies, movies, they definitely use the MCU world as a crutch almost. Well, and I think that's probably just because they came in so late. Um, I think if they had had the rights to Spider-Man from the beginning, oh, you're, you probably would have had right. a Spider-Man movie before Iron Man. No, you know, oh, of cetera. course. Um but what's interesting is like you. Can, I wonder, just based on the movie, do you think that it was ever in the cards that they were they thought they were going to lose it? Because again, they kind of they put it up like he's going to be the next Iron Man, and then and then we you know the the talks between Disney and Sony started breaking apart, and now they're back again. Yeah, I don't because it doesn't the movie. I don't feel like you know Peter Parker is in a drastically different situation by the end of the movie than he was at the beginning. Are you sure? I mean, his mindset is different. I mean, he's literally like he's a for the first time been out outed right by. Yeah, of J.K. course, his, his circumstances are different. His identity is out there, but like he believes in himself more. But it's not like we saw him walking into Stark Tower and like running things. Right. You know what I mean? Like it didn't leave it in a place where, if there was nothing after that, you would just kind of assume that in, I, Peter Parker or Spider Man would eventually inherit the role of Iron Man in the Avengers or something. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It did to me it I I I it definitely there was growth for Peter Parker in the movie, but it, it wasn't like things had drastically shifted in his world. Sorry. Like at the beginning of the movie he was told like you're basically inheriting this position. And by the end of the movie he was accepting that. You know what I mean? Right. I guess the thing I'm I guess I'm trying to get at is it, if they had made a third movie yeah. without the MCU connections, I felt like it would have been inherently hard it would have felt like a totally different movie. Like, like instead of it, Far From Home? And it would, no, a, like a, the After. third one coming out. Like it would have been hard to explain, at least in a, in a good way narratively, why we're not mentioning Nick Fury, why we're not mentioning him. I mean, like, I mean, Nick Fury's so tied to you it now. You could like, if you just made it really personal. 
Like some villain that kidnaps Aunt May. You mean like, you mean like really bring down the plot to like just no, really... just make it personal. Make it like that's what I'm saying. Green like bring... Goblin has kidnapped and and like ransoming Aunt May, and that's the plot. Instead of like instead of it's not world ending, it's something yeah. personal to Peter. That'd be the way to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which which I still think would be a good plot. I'm telling you, here's know. what I think is gonna happen for three. I think it's gonna be called Spider Man Homesick. Right there. No, it's not. Wait for it. Because because here's why. No, it's because not. he can't go home now, right? He was homecoming, far from home, and now he can't go home because everyone's gonna the villains are gonna be after him, right? So I think on top of that, we will maybe probably get Craven the Hunter. Because Craven the Hunter is all about hunting, right? The ultimate prey. And now that he knows Spider Man's identity, I bet money he, he's gonna make a trip over to New York to do some hunting maybe. on top of like probably another maybe primary villain or whatever. Um, but I'm telling you, Spider-Man, Spider-Man homesick. I think it's a dumb name. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, like, I like you Craven. Think, you think far from home and homecoming are good names? No, I, they're, I, they're, I, none of them I, have been great. I don't like their names. Homecoming has been better than far it's from just, home. It's just so on the nose about, oh, he's coming home to studios. Well, no, but homecoming was about, he had a homecoming name. So it was, <laughs> yeah, but it meant I'm multiple kidding. things. I, know. I, know. I, yeah. I, I didn't, I, I didn't mind homecoming. Craven's interesting. I like him as a villain. My assumption though, is that within this deal with Sony, the agreement was that the final Spider-Man standalone film, which will come after the ensemble film, I'm assuming. I don't know if they've announced that, but I'm assuming that. No, they've... Well, no, I, I don't know. They've announced Spider-Man 3's release date. They haven't announced whether Spider-Man's going to be in some event film. They haven't announced right. a, an event film. Yeah. When is Spider-Man 3's release date? Uh, 2022, I believe. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets bumped a year anyway. Um, uh, my, my guess is potentially that Sony has made an agreement where... Tom Hardy's Venom is a part of the final Spider-Man movie, and that's like kind of the bridge into bringing Spider-Man out of the MCU and into the Sony's. I really think in cinematic universe in Venom Two, in the after credits, there'll be a a scene for when is Venom Two released? I mean, it was supposedly going to. Hold on, there's more news for you. Supposedly going to release this October this year. Yeah, but they're halfway done shooting as of like yesterday. So who knows if they Could can happen. if they can make that? It's possible, but it's kind of it's a lot of CGI. It's a lot of work for it's ten months. You know, it's it's quick for, you know, it's not quick and it's quick at the same time. So, yeah, it's so, pretty quick for how much post they're gonna need. So we'll see what happens. Um, so they've probably been previewed before they even shot. But yeah, so who knows? I mean, I'm I just could see Sony like finding a way to sneak in some kind of clause that mandates that. That just wouldn't surprise me. Some like. Like Raven you cause? get, you get no, no, like, <laughs> like you get Spider Man for three more movies, but or two more movies, whatever it is, but in the last movie you have to use our Venom. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I could just see that being the way they do. That. I, I there was a rumor for a little bit that Captain Marvel was going to have Spider Man as like the second character in that movie to kind of like I guess the prop first up Captain, Captain Marvel. The well, the Brie Larson character, no, no, so yeah, the her, one we her, got? her sequel will have Spider Man oh. as like the second character, which I think is like the worst thing because hey, I just don't really like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, but no, and she's, and so, she's so powerful. What does she need Spider Man's help for? I don't know, but anyway, that was the that was the rumor, like the heavy rumor that she's even part of that. Um, and definitely would bring people to even if she don't need it, she made a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, I don't know. This yeah. is the, also this is the first Spider-Man to make a billion dollars. This one is. Yeah, that's wild to me. Because yeah, I mean, again, I liked it. the The ending was a little anticlimactic as far as the fight scene. I I think it just kind of really ended quickly or it. just wasn't that impressive, I guess, yeah. to me. Um, and then of course the the you know the teaser at the end with JJ was great, and I think it is. I you know I was also kind of surprised they didn't reveal Peter Parker to the world within the plot. Uh, it was. Surp- I knew that happened in the movie before I saw it, but I was surprised that it didn't happen in the plot. That I was a part of just oh, like yeah. the throwaway kind of stinger. Did you forget about um, it by the time the movie like finished and like? Oh no, yeah, I didn't. You're always expecting it kind of thing. Well, because the thing I didn't, re- I, the thing I remembered about was Spider-Man being blamed for Quentin Beck's murder from the Morbius trailer. Remember how we yeah. talked about the Morbius trailer and being like, oh, because you know he's blamed and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what I was really waiting on. But I did remember that he got his. I did, I, and I figured it happened at the same time. Gotcha. Um, cool. But I mean, as far as Spider-Man movies, it's in the top half. Top half, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's I not. It doesn't blow my. I mean, I, I'd still probably prefer Raimi's second movie overall. Yeah. 
I think I think Far From Home is my top five of last year, which I, it's always I still haven't put the list out yet. But yeah, it's still I'm well, still the world to, awaits. I'm still trying to. figure I'm not it sure out. how society has continued to move had, forward. I had that it figured list. out, but then Rise of Skywalker really jacked it up. So like I like I had I had pre- such a strange movie to mess had, up your game. I had year, predetermined that Rise of Skywalker would be number two. I thought I was gonna love it, and then it happened, and I'm like, oh, I can't put you as number two now. So like I, I don't think I can. So. And really, the movie really it's messed me rock up. Rock in a hard place. I know. Um, well, we have to cut it short, guys, because this is not an adult cast. This is a baby cast. So this is our baby cast retro review of um, Spider-Man Far, Far From, from Home. Home. Um, Daniel, where can they find us? They can find us at bit.ly slash 241mail, where you can write in. You can tell me all about how wrong I am about Spider-Man Far From Home and why it's one of the best movies of all time or whatever the fuck you guys talk about in those comment sections. They're overflowing, guys. Please tone it down. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And you, <laughs> less comments, please. <laughs> and you can, you can also um, like and subscribe to us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, all those um, you know fantastic social media platforms. Please. We're not um, on TikTok yet, but you said we need one. We'll, we'll get a TikTok. Matter of time. You, get, you need my flipping in there. Do some we flipping. do need some flipping. Do some flipping. Um, also, you can, um, if you happen to find us on YouTube, or if you're watching, you know, watching YouTube, or if you're listening to it on iTunes or any other podcast services, please give us a rating. You know, only five stars according to Daniel. That's and, true. And, Anything less, and I'll kill you. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, only five stars, and um, also leave us a, you know, um, a review or comments, whatever. Just you know, get engaged with us, and we'll we'll make sure that we um, read it on the show. Um, next time we we go to record, this is um, true. Yeah, so um, thank you, Daniel. It was fun talking to Farmer Farmer. There's like I could literally talk about this movie for like an hour and a half. It's fun, yeah. Um, but we just got to kind of kind of short. We got we're we're just tired. Let's just be we're honest. Fucking tired. Let's just we're just tired. It's it's been a week. It's, it's been, been a few weeks. It's, it's a, been a month. It's been yeah, a year. I don't know what today is. Like I feel like it's awesome. It's today. February fourth, but it's only Tuesday. Oh yeah. Oof. Anyway, my name is Donovan Thompson, and my name is Daniel Wingfield, and we have spoken. Thank <laughs> you.